Luke chapter 2, reading verses 22 through 40. Luke chapter 2, reading verses 22 through 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous man and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple court. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phinuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God who was on him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, Holy One, Holy Father, bless our hearts to hear what you have to say to each of us. Draw us in by your Spirit to hear your voice. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Redeem the words and use them to build up your people, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today takes us to the temple in Jerusalem. In the fullness of time, Mary and Joseph had made their trip to the temple. It was their time. 
it was their time. Mary, as all women, were seen to be unclean for the first seven days after giving birth to a son, or 14 days for a girl. And then they had to wait another 33 days for their purification time to be completed. Then they were required by law to present an offering at the temple for purification and for sin. And for those who had those means available, they presented a young lamb that was without spot or blemish. But for those who were poor, they were to give two pigeons or to give two turtle doves. And so we find that Mary and Joseph went with their turtle doves, one for purification and one for sin. We know that Jesus had no sin, but it was important for Mary and Joseph who just had this baby boy, not understanding all that it would mean to follow all of the customs as were set by the law. Jesus was baptized according to the custom. He was dedicated to God and given back to God as the firstborn son of Mary and Joseph. This was a special time. It was a holy time. Now, there is some debate as to who Simeon was. Some say that he was the son of Halil and the father of, Gam- of, Gam- of Gamaliel. Sorry. Um, this would have made him a part of the house of David. Some say that he was very scholarly. But what we do know from the scriptures is that he was a devout man. With prayer and with fasting, with steadfastness, he followed after the Lord, that he treated everyone with the kind of love and reverence and respect that God called on for all of his people. Simeon, he was a man who was worthy of God falling on him with the Holy Spirit. The text tells us that he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would, at some point, see the Messiah who had long been promised be born. One of the things that is so important about this particular item that we learn in the text is that God, even in the Old Testament, was moving by his Holy Spirit. And here we find that we see the Holy Spirit's movement here in in the book of Matthew, uh, the book of Luke, uh, as we consider how God is moving with God's people. He tells him, in some way or another, you are going to be alive when the Messiah is born. Sometimes people ask me, well, how do I know what God wants me to do? Or, how do I know what, what God is doing with this? Or, or how will I know that? And one of the things that we learn from this text is that God moves by the Holy Spirit to come upon us with his Holy Ghost to impress upon our heart a truth that he wants us to know. If we're not used to listening, we may not know exactly what that is. We might think that it's us. We might think that it's just a passing thought. But but when we are tuned in, when we are, are those who study the prophecies, the promises, the word of God, we start to be able to recognize when God is speaking because we've learned his voice. Have you ever heard your mom or dad say something? You know it's them right? If you heard somebody in a mall say it, call your name. They have that way of calling you or saying something where you know that it's them because you know their voice. And so as we study the scriptures, as we study God's word, we begin to hear the kinds of things that God will say. And we're able to recognize his voice because even when we read in the scriptures, what we, what we learn is, is even how God's voice feels as it resonates in our hearts as we read it. And what we know here is that by God's spirit that he spoke, that he spoke to Simeon, and Simeon had this sense of knowing that he was going to be alive when the Messiah was born. It's exciting. I want you to hold on to this because what God did for Simeon, God does for all people if we would seek after him, even as Simeon did. If we would seek to know his word and his voice, as Simeon did. If we would seek to know God's promises, as Simeon did. So as we think about uh, 
what the scripture for today uh, is telling us. As we think about the fact that Jesus and Mary and Joseph, they went to the temple. Uh, they went there to fulfill all that was required of them by the law. If we think about the fact that Simeon saw him and said, Oh, Messiah, now, Lord, you can release me. As we think about what Anna said, Oh, the coming of the Lord's day of salvation. It is coming. It is near. When we think about these things, then the question is, well, why is that really significant? Why is that significant? All of the scriptures that we've read today, all of the scriptures that we've heard today, they all talk about God speaking and God's voice and God's word accomplishing whatever it is that it says. That's one of the things that's most significant about this text today, is that whatever it is that God says, it is true. Whatever it is that God says, it is true. I just want you to practice that with me. If you don't mind just saying that, whatever it is that God says, it is true. Just say that with me. Whatever it is that God says, it is true. That is something that we need to take to heart as God's people. Whatever it is that God says, it's true. And it's right. And when we get that into our hearts, when we get that into our spirits, when we own that as our truth, our lives will start to take a shift and begin to transform. Whatever it is that God says, it is true. Whatever it is that God says is right. And we see this come to pass here in this particular passage. God said that a Messiah would be given, that a Messiah would be born. Not only did God say it, it was true. And not only was it true, it was right. And Simeon was able to see this. As he picked up the child, I believe that the Holy Spirit witnessed to him saying, Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. As he picked up the child, how else would he know except for by the witness of the Holy Spirit? God spoke to him and said, you will see the Messiah before you die. Then he picks up this child, not knowing Mary and Joseph from any other parent. And when he picks up this child, he gets the witness of the Spirit, Messiah, Messiah. What an incredible feeling it is to know that you have met the Messiah face to face. And what a wonderful thing it is to know that what God said, it will come to pass. Whatever God promises, whatever God says to you, it will come to pass. I remember I prayed a prayer when I was a young girl. And it took 25 years for that prayer to come to pass. I mean, I don't know what God had to move around, who he had to work with. I don't know all of the details. All I know is that I prayed and I was an adult before I saw the answer to that prayer. And when the prayer was answered, I had a witness to my spirit, this is the answer to your prayer. Now, who would think that it would take 25 years to answer a prayer? I mean, God, have you forgotten me? But we don't know all of the things and all the people and all of the hurts and all of the situations that God has to resolve and move through to get to a place of answering prayer. But just because it doesn't get answered when you ask for it doesn't mean that God is not on the job. Can I get an amen? God is always working for our good. And I prayed that prayer as a child and I got it answered. 25 years later as an adult. Simeon, he prayed and he sought the Lord. He desired to be able to see the Messiah in his lifetime. I would imagine that if he's anything like I would imagine him to be, that he prayed that prayer as a young child, as he learned the scriptures, as he learned and heard about the prophecies. And not when he was 10, not when he was 20, not when he was 30, not when he was 40, not when he was 50. I would imagine that Simeon was at least in his 80s and beyond before he saw that promise coming to pass. If God has spoken a word to you, don't give up. God's words are true. If he speaks it, it will come to pass. You think about it. One of the greatest things that we learn from this text is that whatever God says, we find that it will 
come true. God speaks to us as we need to hear it. And God will guide us to the truth. One of the things I like about this text is that when, when Simeon got up that morning, the Holy Spirit said, ah, you need to get to the temple. He felt like he needed to be at the temple that day. Now, you know, there are days when we feel like we ought to do something and when we get to that place, we go, oh yeah, it's great that I got here on time because such and such happened. That was great. Or, oh yeah, I feel like I was supposed to do this. And yeah, things worked out this way. Well, for Simeon, I don't know that he knew that the Messiah child was going to be there, but he he knew he needed to get up and he needed to go to the temple. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because sometimes we get an unction, a feeling that we ought to do something. Get up and do it. You don't have to know exactly why the Lord wants you to do something, why he wants you to give something to someone, why he wants you to say this to a particular person, why he wants you to accomplish a particular task. But for whatever reason, make sure that as the Holy Spirit moves on you, that you go and do that thing. Don't say, oh, that was just indigestion. Oh, I'm not sure that that was the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm just not. I think that I'm just going to sit here. Get up and pay attention. Because you have to remember that God is always moving by His Spirit. That's one of the reasons why be still and know that He is God is such a powerful scripture. Because our stillness and our ability to touch the heart and the Spirit of God, to be still enough to feel God moving in our hearts or to put a thought into our minds, we need to have moments of stillness. In our busyness every day as we go to and from, as we are working with kids or working with elderly parents or working on a job or cleaning the house, there's so many things that can happen in a day. And we can feel a little harried and frustrated, but we need to stop in the midst of our day and just be still. To know that God is still God in our day. God is still God in the midst of our family. God is still God in the midst of the church. God is still God in the midst of our world. And if we take time throughout each day to just stop, to be still, we'll be able to feel and sense the movement of the Holy Spirit. It won't just be us trying to be in charge of our lives, us trying to be in charge of what happens, us trying to control the outcome of things the way that we think that they ought to be. If in the midst of our day, we can just stop and be still. I don't want to say every three hours. I don't want to say every five hours. But if in the midst of every day, you can just stop and be still. You can listen for God's voice. You can wait and see if you feel a tug of the Holy Spirit on your heart to do something. And God can lead you. Because Simeon knew what God had said about his life, because he was reading the scriptures and taking time to be still, because he acted in faith on the word that he heard, he was willing to get up and go to the temple that day. And because he did, he was able to see God's word perform. Today, I want to encourage us all, take the time to be still before the Lord. Take the time to be a devout follower of Jesus Christ. Take the time so that if you look at your life, you can see how each day you prove to be a follower of Christ because of how you have interacted with him. You have sought in his presence. You have read his scriptures to know his voice. You were still to listen to how he wants you to move. And by faith, you have done what it is that you feel like he's calling you to do. And then you were able to see the fruit at the end. If we're going to say that we are Christians, we have to be able to see how we are putting in that investment, which includes being still and following God's word, God's promises by faith. We won't see that it is truly God until we move by faith according to his word. But when we do, we will learn how to know his voice and we will learn how to see his word come to pass. If you think about it, in the book of Genesis, God said, let there be light. 
Was his word true? Was his promise fulfilled? Yes, it was. And every day we see light because God spoke it and it came to pass. He even said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate the waters. And he called it sky. He said it and it was so. Everything that God says, it will be so. It will be so. Including things about our lives. My favorite scripture, Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a bright hope and a future. That's what he said. And so it will come to pass. And sometimes we get a specific word that God speaks to us about our lives. And sometimes we can hold on to a promise that God has spoken like that. And I hold on to that promise. No matter what's going on, God knows the plans that he has for me. They are plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Plans to give me a bright hope in a future. And I hold on to that and I live by faith into that. And I want to encourage you to find the promises of God that speak to your life that speak to your situation and hold on to those promises. And if you feel like you need something a little more specific, I want you to reach out to God, continue to read his word, continue to sit, be still, and to listen. And when you hear it, then hold on to it all the more. Why do I say that? Because there are at least two kinds of words that God can speak to us, right? One is a rhema word, an on-time word, a word that is specifically for that moment. If I read the scriptures, God is not going to say, I need you to move now. Well, that's not what the scriptures say. They tell me about things that have happened, right? But that doesn't mean that God can't tell me something specifically about my life for right now or for this season. So there is God's general word, and there is God's specific word. God's not going to tell me that I need to take a trip to Seattle tomorrow at noon in the Bible. But the Bible does tell me that God has guided people to go to particular places at particular times. So I want to encourage you to know that God is not done speaking. He spoke from Genesis to Revelation, but God still wants to speak to us today by his spirit. But the key for Simeon was that he was devout, that he kept going before God, that he kept reading his scriptures, that he kept fasting and praying, that he kept walking by faith according to what God had already said. And he was able to see these things come to pass. Today, the scripture that we hear, it's about Jesus being born. It's about his family following the customs of the law, but it's also about knowing that whatever it is that God promises us that God will do. For instance, God said, I am your healer. So for me, it doesn't matter if I get healed today, if I get healed tomorrow, if I get healed a year from now, if I die and go to heaven and he heals me there. It doesn't matter to me if he said he is my healer, I believe that. And so I cooperate by my faith in knowing that I am healed. Slowly, quickly, doesn't matter. God is my healer. And that is living by faith. And today I want to encourage us all to live by faith. Believing in God's word. Believe in his general word. Believe in his promises. Or ask him for a specific word for yourself so that you can see it come to pass. Because God has not finished speaking to us. God wants to speak to you more than you want to listen. And if we are willing and able to listen to what it is that God has to say, we will come to know that God is faithful. That God is faithful. So hold fast to God's word. Respond by faith to what you hear, to what you read. And watch and see that God will perform every word. Habakkuk, he wrote it down to make sure that he didn't forget. I want to encourage you, as you hear the promise of God for your life, or as you read promises and they give a witness to your heart, write them down. Stick them on your mirror. Stick them on your refrigerator. So that every time you pass by, you know what you're wanting God to do, or you know what God said that he would do, and live in faith by that. And when the Lord answers, write it down. Give glory to God like Anna and like Simeon.
because we can trust in God to complete his word. And that is the good news of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. I am so grateful, God, that you speak. I am so grateful to know that you speak and that the words that I need to hear, that you will whisper them in my ear and not only for me, but for all, for all who seek you. We thank you today, O oh God, for Simeon and for Anna, the prophets who heard your word and who responded, who continued to seek you until they saw your word perform. Give us that kind of desire, that kind of faith, to seek you and to walk by faith until we see your word perform, and then walk by faith even more boldly as we continue to live according to your promises, knowing that they are yes and amen, that they will come true. For anybody who is troubled today, anybody who is feeling a little forlorn, I encourage you and challenge you to read the scriptures, read Bible promises, find a promise to hang your hope onto, and then hang on to it all the more. Ask the Lord to speak to you. What does he want to say to you about your life, about this promise? Write it down so that you don't forget it. Let it be a touch point for you. Let it be an encouragement for you so that you can walk by faith and you can see how God works in your life. God wants to speak. But he needs us to listen for us to recognize how he is moving, how he wants us to move so that we can walk into his blessed and preferred future. Bless us, God, with open ears in the name of Jesus. Bless us, God, with open hearts in the name of Jesus. Bless us, God, with open hands to do your work and your will in the name of Jesus. And bless us to recognize the Savior. For as we embrace him, O oh God, our salvation, our hope, our joy, our strength, our peace, our all in all is revealed. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite for you to do that today. He was born and he still is alive and the Savior of the world. If you'll put your trust in him, not only will he save you from your sins, but he will speak words of purpose into your life. He will tell you what you need to know and guide you by his spirit. You will never be alone. And we win. We ask this all in the name of Jesus.